Hi, I'm Ron Balicki. I want to welcome you back to the second volume in the series on Filipino boxing. So do me a favor, before you get into it, if you didn't see the first volume, go back, check it out. To me, everything is building blocks. We're stacking constantly. You're going to need what we did in volume one before you get to volume two. So just give it a chance, go back, take a look at it, come on back, and let's get into this second volume. Okay, now we're going to go into our one, two, three series. So remember, the one is a jab, the two is a cross, and the three is the hook. All right, so Troy's going to come in. He's going to feed me the one, two, three. Remember the, uh, at the very start of this whole series, I showed you you could parry, you could scoop, you could catch, on and on and on. All right, you could do this with, uh, you could pick any one of them and treat that lead hand that way. And then we're going to go into the two and the three. So uh, just for this video, I'm just going to parry it. So one. The second punch is going to come in. So I want you to gunting right now. So you're going to gunting. Then he's going to hook. I just want you to uh, gunting that hook. Then bounce into the face. One, two, three. So first one. One, two, hook. There. One, two, three. Okay? So do that a few times for you. One, two, hit, 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 hit. Okay? One, two, get the gunting, hit the face. And then go. Obviously, I'd love my partner to just stand there or my opponent to just stand there, but he's feeding me right now, and I want you to understand it or look at it and say, yeah, but he's not doing anything else to you. The idea is he's just letting me get my reps in, and then if we're training, I'd let him get his reps in. Since it's my video, he doesn't get a turn. <laughs> so we go. One, two, I get the hit, I punch to the face. One, two, and three. Let me do it slowly. Parry, split gunting, backhand, hit the face. One, two, and three. So when he's in here, parry, split gunting, it's a backhand or the gunting is here. Go into the face, one, two, and three. And it's just good, just, just target practice, just to keep doing this, just go light like that and he'll just keep feeding me and I hit, hit, one, two, three. Parry, gunting, backhand, gunting, one, two, three. Parry, gunting, backhand, gunting, one, two, three. That's the first one I want you to know. The second one, one, gunting. I just want you to hammer fist. Now I am not parrying. That's the difference. It looks the same, but it's not. If my body were here, I'd parry and hit. But if I feel out a little bit, and I feel like I don't have to defend that as much, I just hit it, hit the face. One, two, three. Again, another technique that looks the same, but a bit different. Okay, so parry, gunting, back and hit. One, two, three. Parry, gunting, back and hit, hit. One, two, three. One, gunting back, one, one, two, three. Last time, slowly, parry, gunting, I hammer, hammer, one, two, three. Now this last one that I'm going to show you is for a tighter hook. There are hooks that are big and wide, and then there are ones that are tighter, okay, or more direct to the face. So we're going to go parry, gunting, and I'm going to gunting backhand, one, two, and three. So parry, gunting, gunting backhand, one, two, three. So slowly. After I get the, the first gun team, I go for the second, even slower. Parry. See, I get the first hit. I see that coming right at my chin. I get the second hit. One, two, three. Now, it's not do a big wide one. It's not the time to do that for this technique. That's not the hook I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you're coming more in. Like if I jab and I cross, and if I just turn it just a little bit and come in, it's almost like this is a jab, this is the hook. Okay? So if we go one, Two, I just go right here and put it in. So the first one, parry, gunting, backhand, go to the face, one, two, three. Second one, I'm at a range a little bit where I can just hammer it, one, two, three. Last one, it's a little more direct, I go right into the split gunting on the opposite arm. Train those three, I'll give you a few more in a little bit. Okay, we're going to continue on with the triangle. Now we're going to go to the, make it a little more advanced for you. I had you step off on the 45. This is the female triangle. Okay, then we stepped back on the male triangle. Now let's add something to it. I want you to step. You're going to step to the top base and then step back. So now this is what we call the full triangle. Walk that for you. 
The key to it is I don't want both feet to be here together. If I step, step, and I come back, slowly they're going to come together. Later, I lose that, and as the one is coming back, the opposite is going forward. Okay? So now that I'm doing the female triangle, and we're saying I'm going to my right, I'm going to reverse it, and let's go to the left. Okay, so that's going to the left. So again, I step, come up to the top base, step back, and then come to the point. Let's reverse it. We're going to the male triangle. Step back, back base, come forward. So one, two, three, back. One, two, three, back to the point. So watch that for a little bit. Okay, now I can also reverse it. So from the point, just step back, go the opposite direction. Okay, so we have the, the female, and then we have the male. So I just want you to just work that, and then we'll come back to footwork later on. Going a little further with this now that we're coming back to footwork, I want you to go into what we call the full hourglass. Now if you come in and take a look at this, you'll see it's two triangles meeting at the point and it resembles an hourglass, so we call it the hourglass shape. So right now, do you remember the full triangle where I had you go step forward and then come back to the point? And then we reversed it where I had you step back and then you come up to the point. You remember we did it left and right. So all right. Now we link them. So now to do the hourglass, I'm going to go one, two, step back. Then we're going to come back up the other side. So it's almost like a step slide back, step slide forward. Step slide back, step slide forward. So I'm just going to walk the triangle. OK. So that's walking the triangle. Now I could do this coming up to my right, or I can reverse it, and I can come up to the left. OK, I want to bring Troy in. We're going to do this as a uh, team. So we're going to be at about handshake range. I don't want to do this this close to him. So uh, what I want to do is I want to give myself some room and about here. So we're going to stay at about this range. So right now, we'll just do this together. We're mirroring each other. You see it? So right now, let's freeze. All right, if we came back and we held hands, not that you're going to do this with your opponent, but if you look, we're about the same distance from each other the whole time. So if we continue, we don't break from that range, time. See it? So now that's what I want you to do with a partner when you first start the triangle. Do it uh, coming up to the left and then switch and then come up to the right. Okay. Work that for a little bit, and then we'll give you a little more as we get into the, uh, deeper into this video. All right, we're back. We're going to go back into Hubud, and I'm going to bring Joe in. OK. Now, when Troy left, we were doing the five for five, right? We also call this the vertical gunting because you are hitting up, and remember we're draw, uh, drawing up into that salute. Okay, so now I have a lot of variations, but the next one that I want to go into is horizontal. So I hit the horizontal. So just think about it. Before I was tacking underneath, now I'm tacking the side. If uh, right now we're punching what we call a vertical punch, but if he had turned it over, it makes more sense to go horizontal. That's where the training is at. Even though he's still doing this right now. So we just go on the horizontal line. All right, so slowly. 
Again, I parry, I hit on the horizontal line, this hand will trap the arm, and I punch back. That's it. So we just go horizontal. Important points. I know it looks the same, but if his arm is turned or if it's straight, it's going to make a big difference. If he punches and if it's a vertical fist, sometimes it's better to come under and get that tricep. Sometimes he'll come out this way, the triceps here. This might work still, but maybe this might behoove me. All right, so you don't know where it's going to be or why you're going to do it. Everything is just feeling. There it just is. There are times where you will you will just have to attack another line. Maybe it isn't getting what the results you need. So this might be what I need to do at that moment in time. So I want you to think of that horizontal gunting. Okay. All right. So the next one. Now we'll we'll just flow. And then when I feel it, I'm going to go into the split gunting. So really slow, Joe. That goes to the split. So right through the flow, I let that arm drift down, I get the hit, and I come back up. For training, I'm just slapping it. For fight, I will hit it, okay? So Joe can do the same to me. I'll let him have some revenge. He gets that hit. That's it. Go on. That's it. So I just right there, and then I come back. So this is what we call the split gunting. So slowly, I go right there. Now think about it. If I had a knife in this hand, that slashes the bicep. This is where that comes from. I get the bicep, and then I come back up. I don't have a knife, so they replace it with the knuckle, and they hit it, OK? You got to remember, if I do nothing, I just keep going. This is just a fragment of the fight. We are just training just the, the, the most minute part of what a fight might be. I wouldn't look at Joe and say, you want to fight? Come on. That's not what this is about. This is about just training that one little moment. Maybe my hand's here and, I, and, and now I keep going. You don't know where your hands are going to be. If I find myself here, this teaches me to keep going. But we just put in a drill. Like I said, it's got to be fun or you're not going to keep doing it. So if we just sit there, we just play games with each other. You go here, right? I can go underneath it. I can come out, right? There it is. So I go back to the five. You don't know. You, you, you got to mix it up to start to have fun with this. Otherwise, you're not going to do it. So just play around with this, and I guarantee that you'll start to develop that reaction to where you'll be able to you see the punch come out. You're just going to go in. OK? All right, so we did the split. Now we're going to go to the next variation. All right, so number three in this series, we're on our third series. I'm going to hammer the bicep. Okay, so what I do is I just go here and I hit it and I continue. Okay, so I move it like that. So I want you to think again, if I had a knife, I am stabbing the bicep and then I hit the face. So you're going to do it, Joe? He goes right there and then he comes to the face. So I go whoop, right there. Now I'm staying stationary just so you can see what's happening. Normally I would drift and hit. Drift out a little bit and do it. See right there, it gives him a good line, got a good solid shot. I'll get him back for that. Okay, so, and then I just go. Okay, that's it. That's to hammer the bicep. Now I'm going to explain it really slow. After, remember that salute? If I take the angle, I cup it. So they call it hammer anvil. And I just, I just mouse it, and then I go back in at him. Okay, now go and do it. That's it, and then go. Now, Another variation that I've been taught. When I take the angle, some people, they pinch. See, they want to solidify this. Other, other than it being flaccid, you want to make it as locked out and hard. And then when you get the hit, it mouses the nerve a lot better. So if I go out, I go like that. I just pinch it, and then I hit, and I let it go, and I continue on. So keep going. Good. That's it. Okay, so that's hammering the bicep. The last one I want to leave you with is de coup. De coup, remember catch or catch? This is the catch I want to do now. This is long range. So if we're at five, I just start to just catch it. What this trains me is not to keep reaching out too far. I go about this far, and I'm training myself. If it were to be a little shorter, I don't want to jump out there at it. So here's just a lot of repetitive training just to get that catch. A little more long range. 
That's it. So slowly, I catch it. So it's like my hand being here. If I'm put, just jab a little bit, it's like me just training this motion, but I just put it into drill form. Okay, slowly. So more of a long range technique. Okay, so remember, when we went, we had the horizontal. You see it? I could put the split in there. Put a split in. Good. I can hammer. Hammer. That's it. Or we go to the decoup. Just catch it. That's it. Okay, train those. Come back. I got more. Hubud is just not double hands. We also have a single hand version. There'll be a version with a neck and with the legs. So right now I want to go into single hand. All right, Troy comes in. I'm just going to have him hold my arm or elbow. This is really simple to start. I want to go counterclockwise. I am going to scoop and lift his elbow off me. He will go same direction, scoop and lift me off. So it just turns into a game of us doing that. Back and forth. All right, let me swing in this side so they can see. Okay, so he's got it. I lift him off, he lifts me off. I lift him off, he lifts me off. Pretty simple. This is single hand hubud. Okay. All right, now we could reverse the direction for the second one, and he lifts it. So I just come underneath and lift straight up. Okay, if I try to hold tight, if I try to get in there, it might be hard, but I, if I shift my body, it lifts it, okay? So I just shift my body and it'll put me underneath his elbow to lift it off. Okay, so one is clockwise, two, counterclockwise. Okay, let's go to number three. Number three is if he grabs me and he pushes down at me, I wipe it. So I push into him, he wipes it. So this is gonna just wipe it off. That's the number three. So I push into him, he wipes it off. He pushes into me, I just cut in, wipe it off, okay? We can go single, single lift, now I can go up with it and wipe. That brings us into the fourth one. I can wipe down, if, if, uh, if he's not too high and my arm can come over, I could definitely wipe down. But if he's shoving me up, it's kind of crazy to come over it, so I just lift from underneath it and then go, okay? So we can just play back and forth, and I'd like you to mix up all four. That's it. So I just want you to play with the single hand hubud, all the concepts, circle, reverse it, wipe over, wipe under. That's it. Play with those four concepts. All right, now that we're into the grappling, let's go into what we call a chieftain series. Now you'll get the name and why we call it that. It's a little long, a little drawn out, so I'm gonna teach it in sections to you. And it should be taught in sections. As you advance through this series, you should be collecting. So everything doesn't have to be just dropped on you at once. So let me give you the first few. You could think about that, work that, and then later we'll come back in the series and we'll cover more of this. So Joe comes in. All right, if you remember early on, uh, I taught the six sectors. The one, two, uh, I don't know if you remember the one, two, three, four, five, six, where it was outside, outside, out, in. Okay, when we jump all the way to the number six, it went one to the split. Okay, one more time. One split entry. This could be the punch. I'm just putting a hand here for now. Now, remember the decoup? Remember we had on the lead hand series, you could decoup right there. Decoup is catch. You could catch or you could catch. Right now, we're going to do it from the split. So one to the cup. See the headbutt is here if I want it. See the elbow bump and then the wrist just uh, twists and puts him to the ground. Now the first one, I'm just kind of settling in easy, but the first one, now that I brought him down and I ha if I hung on to the de cup, they just transfer the hand here and they grab just above the wrist, grab the pad of the, th uh, the thumb and uh, the pad of the little finger, and then I reach through grab my own forearm, and I put it against my body to support his elbow, and I just flex that in. This is what we call a gooseneck lock. 
Okay, so right here, this is my gooseneck. Sometimes he might try to pull away a little bit. If he does, I put it to the floor and then I transfer. Both thumbs go in between his uh, metacarpals here. And then I grab underneath, grab the pad, and I sandwich his elbow in. Now this one, it, this one looks a little silly. People think, oh, I could get away from that. If he goes to punch me, ah, see, that goes on. If he tries to slide away, it doesn't. You're kind of just stuck here. This is a, a different kind of lock. It, it just feels a little strange that you're stuck totally free except your elbow and wrist, and you can't do anything. Okay, so again, the first one right here. If he pulls away a little bit, I put it to the floor. This is my second one, okay? Now, I'm gonna go right here. This is gonna stand this up and see how I put the wrist right here? This flexes this in, okay? So right here, if for whatever reason I need to come up, I try to straighten it up. Maybe I don't get, maybe I, I don't get the number two. It goes right from the number one and he punches that arm up. I just follow it up. Now, I hold the elbow and I push it right almost into like his neck or jaw here and then I just push that wrist down just like that. Okay, let me cheat you over this way just a little bit because I got to turn you over. Okay, so from this position, we're right here. Okay, I want you to get up. You're going to hop around. I lift and I push it over here. This is going to be the next one in the series. Right from there, they go right here. Knees in and then I just flex it. So let's do that again. Come on back up. Let's switch sides. Okay, so one, two, collapse, bump put them down, okay? Right here, I flex it or I go into the figure four. He pulls down, I put the elbow to the mat. Right there, I put it on, you see it? Okay, if for whatever reason this had to come up, I just press it on right there. Can the, let me turn you a little bit, okay? So I just go right here, okay? Let me swing your legs up to the front. So now watch, if I'm here and I do, uh, do that last one, I stand and I pull, now I lift him and I shove right back down. This is gonna go right here and then let's end it right now here. I'll tell you what, we'll go one step further. This is gonna go here. So this is what we call a chicken wing lock. So after I was here, I just put this arm through, grab my own arm and I put the lock on. Okay, so roll over or stand up, I'll roll you over. Okay, so one, cover and hit. Head, elbow, bring him down. I could do the first one here or here, doesn't matter. Whichever one I get, place it on the ground here. I'll go a little easier on him so I don't have to kill him. Stand it up here. Get up, I hop around, pull and push. This goes here or here. And I swing right there, okay? So that's enough to chew on for a while and then a little while we'll come back, we'll do some more. Continuing on with all the grappling that we're doing, now I have another series we call the Egyptian series. And I'll explain why it's called the Egyptian series. Usually it's like usually one movement or one lock that we name it after just to kind of wake up our memory as to what we're doing. And Egyptian is what we coined this. So Joe comes in. I want you to think of the figure four. So now I'm going to teach this for those who don't know what a figure four is. So one, two, Remember the gunting? So uh, when we did the, the single hand series, when I did the gunting to the outside, we're going to do it to the rear hand. Gunting. So this, when he jabs, crosses, is really hitting here. All right, so I want you to shoot that elbow. Go to the eye, and this is the figure four. The figure four, I just drop my weight, and I press him down. You see it? So now it would turn here. So I'm going to spin it just so camera, let me put you over here. It'll put me in front uh, the right angle. One, there, figure four, ah, that's better, okay? Now, I can come into here, or I could come into here, all right? So the first one, I just wanna hook it right here, okay? You see this? I'm just gonna press it up right here. This is the first one in the series, one, okay? The second one is I'm gonna step on the hand and press. The third one is I figure four my legs, and then I just lift up.
Do you see it? So just lift up. Okay, that's it. So now, we're going to go a little further, but let me stand it back up. I want to explain everything a little bit better. Put you on this side, please. Okay, so one, two, get that gun ting, which you should know by now. I want you to go right here with the elbow. This could wipe the eye. This could elbow the face. Now, if you look, this hand right here, I just curl it in. Hit, press it down. I just put my weight down. I'm going to let it go and put it underneath my leg. One. See it? So it's important that I press, right? If I don't press, it just kind of goes up. But what I do is, right now, I push it down, I don't let it come up, and I just press it on. So me scissoring my legs or squeezing my legs together, actually, will put the pain on the arm. Next one, same theory, but they step on it. If he had a weapon, they might step on the weapon and shove right here. Be aware, he's going to hit. We'll deal with that later. Okay, so this is my second. Next one, I put it right here, and then I just lift it. See, I lift my rear end off the floor and just press right there. So right there. Okay, so now we're going to tuck this right here. Okay, the first one is I hook and I just lift right here. Okay, so this just comes up right here like that. Okay, so the, well, let's take it that far. All right, so right here, I just push. Next one, I step on the hand. The next one, I hook, and that's it. For that, then I tuck it, and now I'm just gonna put right here. You got that? Last time. Okay, important pieces to know. Up, don't let the shoulder come up, and it puts it on. Make sure this gets held down, all right? You don't want them to slip out, so one, okay? If I step on it, I could do it, or I figure four and lift. If the hand comes out, or if I couldn't get it under here and he bent it, I tuck it. And then this just pulls it right up like that. You got that? Okay, train that. We'll come back, and I will show you the end of this. I want to go into a little bit of our throwing, all right? So they'll, sometimes they'll call it either bentihun, uh, which means to trip someone, or the, uh, it just depends. They'll say linakun, which uh, actually uh, there's two. There's likus and linakun. One of them means to coil the rope, like if you were a ship and they, you know how they moor the ship and they just wind the rope? All right, that's uh, linakun. Or likus is like the cowboy with a lasso and that's leakus, that's to spin it. So let's start off with that, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do it from a few different entries just to, so I'm not rep so repetitive with the same one. All right, first he'll jab, and then on the cross, we've done this already. So I do the gunting, I elbow, I'm gonna shoot the knee in. Now this is the big difference between Filipino martial arts and Indo Indonesian or Malaysian martial arts. Some of them follow what we call like either geometry or an energy line. Filipinos, tend to hit uh, the, or use pain compliance. I like that. I mean, I think it's cool to combine and use the best of both worlds. But right now, what I want you to do is your one, two, three. So when I step, I lower the head with me. So very important. After I knee, I don't want to step and pull him. He's going to be strong or fight me, and he's going to be punching and going nuts. So after I shoot the knee, I lower him with it. Now watch my left leg. I am going to circle step and I just let the head fall through, and then this is gonna come here. Do you remember all these things that we've done earlier? Is he's on his side, I can go into all the locking from there. So let me stand you up, go on the side. Okay, so one, two, three, knee. I step and bring the head, circle step, put him through. Look at we're back in the Egyptian series, all right? Or I can do it on the inside. So the inside, one, I hit the inside, elbow, eye, See so, you now right here, and then I just turn it right through, and I'm back here again. Come on this side. Let me slow down a little bit. One, so I get the hit, and I elbow. One more time, slowly. I get the hit, I elbow. See how I wipe the eye? Throat, knee, and then I come right here. Drop my weight, circle step, causes that funnel for him to fall through, 
and then I can go into the locking. Okay, on this side, please. So, one, two, three, wipe the eye, throat, knee, step, circle, tuck the head, and now I'm right back here again. Okay, that's inside. We can also do the split. The split will go jab, split right here. So I swing out and I hit again. One more time. One, two, swing out, hit again. Go to the knee, step, circle, and then go. If he were to come in, if I were to punch and he were to come in to tackle, one, two, I could still come here, knee, step, circle, and then take him back into the locking. All that is the linakun. So this can be done from inside, outside, split, or him attacking me. It can go if he kicks me. I could ride it. See now knee, turn it, tuck, go. If he kicks with the other side, high or low. I just put the shield up. I don't know where it is. Do it again, please. I go here. I go, whoa, I in, tuck it. And then I just go right back into the locking. Okay? That's the linakun. So for now on, when you see me do this, or I refer to linakun, it just means to turn the head, tuck them through, and go to the fall. So that's our first in the series. Train that. We'll come back and give you more. Let's go into another throw. This is the Willis. Remember, I said sometimes they call it bintihun, which means trip. So this is going to be a little bit involved in between throwing and tripping right now. So Troy comes in. All right, the first Willis. And now, if you if you speak Spanish, you'll know Willis means to sweep. So I'm thinking of sweeping his leg, uh, just for this one. All right. So Troy is going to go one. See, I can go two right here. I can elbow. See, I can knee and move step. This could be the first one. Let me swing in this side. Be a little easier and I'll have to move funny. One, two. See, when I go here, I knee and I step here. See, this is the first one. This is going to take it down this direction. Okay, come back up. One, I can do it from the outside, knee, and then I step here. Now, I don't always have to pull or sweep. I can just press also and it takes him down. Okay, now if you, if you just think about it, if I can just get him to move, see now he's on that tight wire. So I can use the leg to press it down, okay? If we go one, two, hit, knee, set it down here. See this knees it, I could take it down, all right? Let me swing it back on this side. So we go one, two, swing, knee. I can step to this side and swing it down, okay? I'll repeat them again slowly for you. All right, so the first one, after I knee and I set him, if I feel the weight is more on the back leg, I will pull. That's my sweep. Otherwise, it goes more into tripping him. So if I come here and I knee and I set him down, if you look, I can press right there. Let me put you on the side. Uh, I don't know if they got, got that. So one, sorry, one, two, three. So once I knee and I set it, see this line? I just press on it and it takes him down. We can go one, two, three, knee, set it down. Now watch my knee. That will force it down right there. Or one, two, three, knee. Now when I go here, this is going to take it down this direction. All it is is if I can get him to move, he's on that tight wire, if I hit it, it's going to drop him. Okay? And then the last one, when I go here, I just switch. This hits the neck, and this just steps here. And I trip him over my leg that way. So this is what we call Wallace, okay, or Bentihun. Okay? Everything I do to the front, I can do to the rear. If I knee and he steps back, See, this is where we can go right to that side, and we can repeat everything that we did on the rear leg. Okay? So just freeze. So when I step in, and I step, no, don't step back. When I step in, and I step back, first, I pull the leg with my foot. Second, I press. Third, I knee press down. Next one, I knee across. And then the last one, I step through. That is what we call the wulis, or the binti hun. Now 
Now we're going to go into what we call a gaja series. Gaja is, uh, well, it means the elephant. And the reason they call it the elephant, let me swing on this side, please. Okay, so if Joe goes, jab, and when he does the cross, I'm going to go with the outside gunting, and then I'll go with the uppercut. Do you remember that in a series? We did it off the lead hand where I covered and I did the uppercut. We're just applying it on the rear hand now. One, and then I uppercut. Now the first one in the gaja series, well actually the first one in the gaja series is just I score and then you just keep on with the boxing. So that's what I'm going to want you to do for the first one. One, and then up. And now you just, just go in with boxing. So one, up, hit. Okay? So if this fails, maybe he slips that way and I miss it, this is the first one. So they catch it, what they say, on the close side. Do you see that? Okay, one more time. One, parry, upper. If I hit, good. If I miss, I grab it on the close side. I just want you to tuck this. See, this is what they call the trunk of the elephant. So if you think of an elephant, how it picks up uh, uh, wood or fallen trees, this is it right here. So they just tuck it. See, this will knee, then I'll turn this down. Now look at where I go right here. So let me kind of bring you up and turn it to this side. So you go one, up grab, I tuck the arm, I knee, see the turn here? So if he goes to the ground, remember what I said in the grappling, sometimes he'll be on the right side or the left side. I could still put this on, or I can let it go, step over, and go into the arm bar, okay? Come on, back up. So one, gunting, uppercut. He slipped it, I grab, I tuck. See, I put the knee in, now right here, I don't let him go down. I just go right here with it. So let me bring you up a little bit, sorry about that. So right here is the lock, okay? Let me do that again. You don't know where he's gonna land. Sometimes he'll drop to the ground. Sometimes his back will fall against you like this. Watch, if I go here, one. So when I go through here, sometimes I go right here. So his, just go down, thanks. <laughs> this side, just go right here. Okay, so that's the first one in the Gaja series that I want you to know. Actually, it's the first two. Uh, swing this side now. So, parry, gunting, upper is the first one. So after you do that, bump, I just want you to come right back out. But if I miss, just grab, tuck, knee, swing through. Now this is standing, or if he comes down to lying, I put it on also. It'll work down there too. So work those two, I'll come back, I'll give you more later. We're going to go into a little bit of the grappling now. This is called Dumag or Buno is the name we'll use for this, so Joe comes in. All right, this is called the Octopus Series. So right now I'm going to start it with uh, just a basic entry. I actually, I'm going to have Joe try to body tackle me. So we're going to jab, and then on the cross, he's just going to pass the elbow, and he's going to tackle in. Do this again for me, please. So one, two. When he comes in, I just want you to drop. So I lower myself in. I'm going to cheat you over here. See how I hook the arm right here? Come back. All right, so right here I drop, I hook the arm. I just want you to step back, and then I'm just going to set my hand down on the floor. Now watch. There's not a lot there. Press back against my shoulder. See, he can resist me a lot right here. But watch, this leg right here, the one that's behind his back, just slides through, and that's it. That's the pain. So the first one is, some people call this, uh, call this the stocks position, or we call it the octopus. So you just go through one. The second one is what we call going into the table. See, I put the hand between the, uh, the, uh, the legs, and then I just lean in. So right now I'm on all uh, knees and hands. So we say we table and I push forward. All right, so now the next one, I am gonna just come up and I keep his head right in the pocket of my hip. And then I just reach over and I touch his knee. That's the third one, okay? I grab this arm, lift it, put the knee down. This will come over, this is what we call full crucifix. And then they just dive, okay? Then we're just gonna rock him over, release this, and then I'm just gonna come right here to end it. So let me change angles just so the camera could see it from a different view. One, two, drop, hook. I step, turn it over, okay? So now I just sit out. 
then I put it between the legs, table, put it in the pocket, I lean in, I scoop through, see how my knee drops? Then I'm gonna go right to here, this is the full crucifix. Then I rock it over, and then I just go right here with it to end it, okay? I'm gonna go through this a couple times, poor Joe. Okay, slowly, one, two, drop your weight, hook, step, turn, drop him. This should be enough. Right now, that should be enough. But for whatever reason, if I can't get this leg free or I can't slide, I just grab it and tuck it. This goes right here, okay? Put it in here, see it? And I just lean over. I hook, come in, full crucifix, right here. I just cup the head and then I hook and then I go right here. See, I can go right back to the table on this side also, okay? So let's switch sides again. Come on back over here. Okay, one, two, in, I drop, hook, step back, right here, one. Okay, slide through. Now watch this, interesting point. Just rotate, rotate, rotate. Okay, if I put my rear end to the floor and I lean back, resist me, you can see he could fight me. Now check this out. If I'm up, I'm not gonna put my rear end to the floor. Resist, resist. Can't, okay, I could feel him just cringing, okay? So if you put your rear end on the floor, it's like you uh, alleviate the lever. So if I keep my hip off the floor, it just puts everything right into his neck, okay? Then I put it between the legs, hands down, lean into it, okay? Throw it in the pocket, let me cheat you over. Right here, see they just go right there. That's half crucifix, put the knee down. They hook, full crucifix, rock over, I just grab the head and I hook it. And then I just go right here to end it. Okay? So this is the octopus series. Be careful. Pretty good. Uh, just be aware you could really, really torque somebody fast. So just go easy with it and have fun. Continuing on with the triple jab series, Troy's back out. All right, we ended with the body shot. He could go to the face or the body. So we went one, two, right there. So he had a choice of going one, two to the body or the face. Doesn't matter. So now the next one in the series, he's going to go to the face at the split, uh, split entry. But this time I'm going to have an obstacle in the way that he has to get rid of. So we're going to go one, two, split. And now that arm's stuck there. I didn't pull it back. So again, one, two, split. Now he shoves that back in my face and he backhands. One, two, three. Again. One, two, split. There it is. One, two, split. One, two, split. Again. One, two, split. All right. Now the next one's going to be at the body. So he's going to go one, two, split to the body, swing it around, slow. One, two, split to the body. See how he swings around it? Even slower. One, two, split to the body. See, he shoves that arm, swings the arm around. Slow again. One, two, split. My arm's in the way. He swings it around. One, two, three. Do that a couple times. There it is. That's it. So that was one, two, split to the body, swing it around, one, two, three. Next one is going to be the inside gunting. We're going to stop it right there. One, two, inside gunting. One, two, inside. Let's swing around the side. One, two, inside gunting. Slow. See how he gets the shot? You guys have been doing the inside gunting this whole video, so it shouldn't be a big deal to you. So we go one, two, inside gunting. One, two, mm. 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 slow. One, two, inside gunting. So I punch, he punches, inside gunting. All right, so now the next one we're going to go into is the same thing virtually one, two, inside gunting, backhand, one, two, three. That's it. 
One, two. Inside gunting. Backhand. One, two, three. One, two. Inside gunting. That's it. One more. Real slow. One, two, gunting backhand. One, two, three. Now I'm going to give you one more. You're going to go one, two. This is called panastas. He's just going to cut the angle. See, this is really into the eye if he can. Okay? One, two, panastas. Then I'll swing out. He will hook, cross, hook. So he parries. He punches back. Now he shoots in right at me. I swing out. Do it again. One more. Slowly. Parry. Panastas. The only part you're going to really get confused with is a lot of times you want to do the panastas throughout the whole thing. But the first one you parry. Then he punches back. Then just shoot in. That should be at the eye. Then hook, cross, hook. Okay, let's take it that far. Okay, continuing on with the single hand who bud. Troy's going to come back in. Let me put you on this side right away. All right, so we're going to continue. Remember, you, we could go clockwise. So we're going clockwise. We can go counterclockwise. I could wipe over. Troy could wipe over. He can go, or I can go underneath, or he can go underneath. See, so let's just flow a little bit. So right now, when we're flowing, and if I feel it, I could switch sides. So let's go back. So if we start to go, no matter what happens, when he crosses over to wipe, he presents the opportunity for me to grab that, and that will transfer us to the opposite side of the body. So let's go slowly with it, just so they can see it. So when we're flowing, I go to the other side. See, and he just continues on. So we have the same four concepts on the other side, wiping under or wiping over. So just play with that, and then when I put my arm over, he could steal it from me, and it transfers sides. You see that? So as soon as I feel, see it, I just transferred him. See, and the minute he feels me go over, he could steal it back, and then we continue on the other side. Okay? So I know it's not fighting, it's just a drill, but it's, it's really good. It teaches a lot of tactful uh, energy that you need while you're flowing to be able to just kind of uh, turn his energy around. If he's got me and he's controlling me, instead of me falling back, I just wipe, and then we just continue on with the drill. Okay? So let's just flow. Let him watch. Go. Good. That's it. So slowly, whenever he feels me go over, he could steal it. I feel him go over, I could steal it back. Okay? So that's transferring from left side to right side in the single hand hubud. Okay, coming back in, we're going to go a little further with the lead hand series. So we were doing the Pagliabut. So uh, right now we ended up with the Pagliabut to the elbow. The, the next one I want you to do, the last in the Pagliabut, is going to be the uppercut. So the uppercut can go, again, it can go here, here, wherever I can make it to. So when he does the scoop, he uppercuts. It could be straight to the face, or if my face isn't there, he just takes the bicep. So when we go, just like that, and he goes like back and forth. There it goes. One, two. So that's it. So I'm just kind of pot shot in the elbow. Okay, you see it? So I go, and then just come back in. Okay, the idea is one, and then he would just start to just flurry in on me. You don't admire your work. You get the shot, you keep going. If you miss the shot, you keep going. If you stop and look, they're going to catch you cold. You, uh, it, it's, it's, I can't stress it enough, the importance to just keep going. You could sit there and think about what you, did, what you did after the person's on the ground and done. Don't stop to look to see if it worked now because it will come back and haunt you. Okay, so we had this one, 
or one. We'll say we could do it to the face if we can reach it to the face. Okay? All right, so the next one in the series, I'm going to call it knife edge to the wrist. Uh, uh, it's wrist to wrist, but it's the knife edge. So what they do is they scoop and then they elbow. So when, uh, let me do it one more time. When I scoop, or when I hit, if you look at this, if you could come in and check this out, I'm trying to tweak this out. Now, if the punch is more of like a Wing Chun man, it's not really going to do much. It's not designed for it. It might, but I, I don't see it. What you're trying to damage that. So you go like that, and then they elbow, and then you can just keep going. So when he goes, he sandwiches, he does a little scoop, then he's going to hammer anvil. When I'm talking about hammer anvil, uh, no, this way. One, two, they catch him, they, they kind of catch him, and then they go. Okay, so he's going to one, scoop, and then catch it and go. That's it, and then backhand or hit the bicep. Exactly. So what Willie did is he went one, and then he hit the arm, which I like. Or you can hit the face. doesn't matter. So one, scoop it, elbow, backhand. So slowly, I hit it. I do a little bit of a scoop, a little puggly butt. Elbow, hit the bicep or hit the face, or both if you can get it. One. Go slow with it just a little bit because this is different. Then cover and hit. Bang, and then hit. Okay? Back and forth. One, hit, go. One, hit, go. One, hit, go. That's it. So you just scoop it. Little scoop, elbow, backhand. Little scoop, elbow, backhand. Little scoop, elbow, backhand. Little scoop, elbow, backhand. That's it. So it's speed. When you're doing it, right here. One, two, three. That's it. One, two, three. So. That's it. All right, so if you look at it, it's always not going to work. There are times you miss it. There are times you jam up. It doesn't matter. Just go one, two, and then get that backhand. All right, let me swing you around. OK, the next one is going to be panastas, and then I hit the bicep. OK, so he just shoots that in and hits the bicep. He really, do it again, he wants to get that eye jab. And if, say I, he doesn't get it, I lean back, that opens up the line. You see it? Same thing when I do it. I shoot it in. I, I'm trying to get the eye. If he gets out of there, I just get that little bit of chip right there. So one, two. That's it. One, two. Hit. That's it. This one I like. I get this one a lot. When I'm gloved up, guys don't know I'm getting it. And it's not designed for boxing. But when I'm gloved up, I'll always go like that, and I, I kind of hammer it. And people, I've had some people notice it like it's not doing nothing. They don't understand that it's designed for a gloveless hand. So when we go here, one, I hit it. One, hit it. One, hit it, one, hit it. That's it. So this one's pretty simple. If I can shoot in and hit the eye, I hammer it. If he shoots and hit my eye and I lean back, see, he gets that hammer down on the bicep. That's the next one that I want you to go over. OK? So again, one, hammer it. One, hammer it. OK. Coming back into our grappling section, now we're going to do the lying down on the side. So if you remember at the start again, I had put him on his side, not flat on his back, but rolled up on the side. So with that, we're going to go what we call branch up and bran branch down locks. So Joe comes in, one, I can do the split, we've done this already, and then I pull him down. Now if he were to go on his side and roll up as if he wanted to get away, I will weave and step through. Now this has been around forever. This is one of the first things I was taught. So the first one that we're going to do is just unsupported. I turn and I put it on. The next one, we can make it also like a prayer. You see that? Or we bear hug it right here. Okay. So I'm going to go real slow over this. Unsupport. You can make it like a prayer. You can do the bear hug and put it on. Another one is they'll grab the pant leg and they'll put it on here. You see it? Just like that. Or if it's straight, I'll still put it on here. OK? I can lie back. Now, when you lie back, I want you to be really careful. You'll see as I lie back, it starts to put it on really bad. OK, let me come back up again, Joe. OK, come over here. Let me twist you this way so the camera can see. OK, so when I'm in the branch, up position. This kicks in, because if I, if I didn't do this, if I just went to do this here, he's going to run, and he's going to get away from me. All right, so what I do is I put this right here, and I go one, two, three, four. So I grab that pant leg. If this comes straight, five, 
Now I lie back. It could be bent or straight. Doesn't matter when I lie back. Be careful because it goes a little bit further. And then this one's pretty bad too. Is I lie forward and I put it on right here. Okay. So this is the branch up series. Let's do it again from the top. He comes in. Sorry. So I can come in. I don't have to always do the same one. I can go in what they call the lenicon. Okay. It put me now into the branch down series. I hook it. Now before I had stepped over the stomach, now because the arm's down, I step over the face. This is one. This is two. Three. Four. You see it? It could go straight. Five. I could lie down with it. Six or bent six. Or I can lay forward. Now watch out again. This one's bad. When I, as you, you can see he's already padding. If you lay down it's going to pop it. Okay. Now, they also have, I'm going to add two more for it. They also have where you grab, we say grab his rear end. <laughs> Something's weird, but you just grab really, it's the back. Or if I'm in the branch up position, I've already done this one for you earlier, where you grab the head. Okay, so let's run through them all again. Each time I want to do a little bit different entry for you, just so you can start to see the variety of what we do. We go one, two, three. Now, I might put his head right here. See, this pulls him down. Look, goes branch down again. I step over, okay? One, two, three. I can grab garment here or here, it doesn't matter. Four. You see it? If it's straight here, five. Okay, I can grab the rear end, six. Okay, I can lie back, seven. Or I can lay forward, sorry about that joke, eight. There it is. Okay, come on over here. Remember the, when I go here, whoop, back to this side, now it's branch up. Okay, let me move you over a little bit so they can see it. Okay, so right here, uh, I can go unsupported, the prayer, the bear hug, grab the garment, grab the back of the head. It can be straight, or I could lie back, or I just lie forward. Mm, you okay? Okay. okay. All right, so that's my Branch Up, Branch Down series. Continuing on with our lock flow now. Remember, we had the parry, elbow. When the hand went back, I chase it down. Obviously, I can get into this a lot of different ways. I can go here, here. If he pulls away from me, I might attack it on this side. Wherever I see the hand, if it's static and just sitting there, I just get on it and go. If he hits me, maybe I block and I just go back to the throw. It, obviously, it's just a drill. If I can't get that one, maybe I go into this one. From there, I can go to the number two. You don't know how. It's just a dictionary of motion. It's just going through A, B, C. Obviously, if we just did the ABCs, we wouldn't have words because we're not mixing up the letters. Mixing up the letters, you get words from words, sentences, sentence, paragraphs, paragraphs, chapters, chapters, books, right? So that's how I piece everything together. We're just learning the ABCs of it. Later, we'll link it in different ways and start to make new words out of this. Okay, so one elbow, he goes back. I chase it down, get my hand on it for the first one. The number two is here. Number three, I hand it off to the other hand. I grip it, turn, lift, bang, hyperextend. Hyperextend a second time, roll it over. This is as far as I've taken you. Now, if he drops that elbow or if he tries to get away from me, this is what we call the figure four. I've done this already, the figure four, okay? Now, from the figure four, if I don't like that, I will extend it straight out. And now I put both thumbs right here and hyper, uh, uh, get the arms straight and hyperextend the wrist. Okay, let's take it that far again. All right, so one. Clockwise, I turn it down. Two. Hand it off to the other hand. Turn, lift it up, hyperextend, hyperextend. Roll it over, number five. Okay, turn it over. Right here, this is the figure four. Straighten it out. Go for the wrist lock. My, my thumbs should be right in, the, uh, in between the metacarpals, and I put the wrist lock in. Now, let me turn you to the side. When I'm in this lock, right here, I hook the thumb. You see how I grab his thumb? So right from here, I got both metacarpals. I just shift and I grab the thumb. 
Now I turn it down, grab the bicep, and then I'm gonna walk it here. This is what we call a gooseneck lock again. Okay, so right here I have the thumb, you see it? So right from here I grab the thumb, hook it, bend the arm up, and now we just walk it in here. There are little things I could add, like I can add the digit. Again, if you have that person with the loose wrist, odds are loose wrist, the finger, something's gonna catch or break. All right, so right here. So let's do the whole thing again. One elbow, right there. Flex the wrist, chicken wing, hand it off, hyperextend, hyperextend, roll it over, straight arm bar. He drops his elbow, I turn it into the figure four. Walk it out, flex the wrist, hook the thumb, curl it in, chicken wing. I'm not, sorry, gooseneck, okay? I'm gonna walk it out, watch this. I grab the two fingers. The palm of my hand grabs the back of his hand and I hook two fingers. Then I put my hand on the bicep and right here, this is uh, what we call the parallel cant. Now, the parallel cant, it's not gonna work too good out here, right? But it, the more I bring it in at the face, the more pain. If I sink my weight, it gets really bad, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hook the thumb. Eight, and right here we'll end it for now on the parallel cant. Remember, the arm's parallel, and he can't believe it hurts quite that much. All right, so work that. We'll come back, and then we'll hit it to number 12. Okay, we're coming into the 1-2 series again. Now we're gonna go five through eight. So one to four, when Troy comes in, I'm gonna recap, went one, inside denting, elbow, wipe the eye, go to the throat, shove him. One, two, three, round kick. Second one, parry, gunting, rear elbow, step with the hack. One, two, three, round kick. Third one, long range, gunting, shove. One, two, three, Round kick. Fourth one, Perry Gunting right to the hack. I step with it. One, two, three. I round kick. That's the first four. Remember that? Okay, so now if you have that down, let's go into the five. So the number five is going to go outside and then I shove. So when I go outside with this, I want you to think of going for the eye. Or you can go for the hit to the, uh, with the Gunting, but I'll be honest with you, I, I like the idea of going to the eye and then I shove it. One, two, three, and I kick. Let me do that a couple times. Okay, slowly. Parry, outside, swing and shove. One, two, three, kick. Next one. Outside, I swing, hook. One, two, three, I kick. Now if you check this out, I pull him in and I step in and hack. One, two, three, round kick. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right. <laughs> One more. Okay, so right now, next one, this is where we go into our elbows. So we're gonna one outside entry, snap the elbow in there, shove them away. One more. Okay, so slowly, last time, when you come in, bring it here. You see it? I'm kind of trapping the arm, kind of funneling it right into the elbow, shove right from there. Kick. Last one. I'm going to draw it in. I elbow, then I step in. Okay, again. <laughs> So it's a rear elbow, slowly. When it comes in, snap the elbow, step and hack. 
One, two, three, kick. Okay, let's recap. One to eight. One, Gunting, elbow, wipe the eye, go to the throat, shove. One, two, three, kick. Two, rear elbow, step in. One, two, three, kick. Long range. Long range with the hack. Outside. To the shove. Outside swing and hack. Elbow. Lead. Rear. To the hack. That's one to eight. All right, get that down. Then we're going to have our ending part going all the way into number 12. All right, continuing on with Hubud. Troy comes in. Now we're going to go to the backhand cycle. All right, so we have all the different drills that we've gone up to so far. You should have about 12 variations, right? We can go the one for one. Okay. Now we're going to stay on that backhand angle. Remember this, backhands? This time we're not going to come out of it. Before we came out with the double two or we went to the triple two, right? So we're just going to stay in the backhand. So this is the drill that I want you to do with your partner. We continue with just backhands. But now, I'm going to make Troy do the exact same thing no matter what I do. Okay? So right now, I'm going to make a switch. And we just keep going. And then I'm going to switch back. Okay? All it is is a cadence drill, and it's teaching him to stay on, t uh, on task while I change up. That's the drill. Not too hard, but it's an important part of what we do. So I just want you to just really give this some time. You'll see that at first, it'll trip you up. I guarantee within a couple minutes, you guys will be rocking with it. So just keep doing this drill for me. All right, slowly, if you look at it, when I backhand, the hand that hits grabs. Do you see it? I'm hitting with my left hand, I hit with my left hand, I hit my left hand, I grab with my left hand. That switches me back. Does it make sense? I hope so. So if Troy does it, he hits with his uh, right hand, hits with the right, then he's going to grab with the right. There you go. And then he switched it. Slow down so they can see it. So after I cycle down, I grab, and then I go. Okay. After that, I cycle down, I grab. So it's like I hit and then I grab with the same hand. It just makes like a, a fast little loop instead of the big drawn out uh, swing that we're doing right now. I just go right here. That's it. Okay? Work that. Come back. I got more. Back into the lead hand series, Willie comes back in. In this section, we're going to cover elbows. All right, so everything we're doing still is just dealing with him jabbing. That's it. This is the only thing that's working right now. So as Willie uh, uh, jabs, I'm going to elbow. So the first elbow you're going to do, I want it horizontal. So he jabs, I elbow. I'm going to go at him, he elbows. So right now, just put the elbow in. Remember, this is just target practice. You're not killing him with it. We're just nice, soft elbow. Don't hurt him. It's good to glove up, OK? If you don't have the, uh, the, the NHB style gloves, uh, just a good pair of boxing gloves on and just get the elbow. When he elbows real slow, I try to do the paalis, and, and I just get the, uh, the elbow in. Uh, the terminology that we use is sico. So they'll say sico, sico. 
It means we're just kind of giving it back and forth. The elbows, eye elbow. That's it. So I'm not aiming at his elbow. I find people do that, like punch. The, the, uh, the, they'll go for my elbow. Go for my chin and let me come and move you into the elbow. So this is what I'm looking for. OK, time. Now, we can do it with the opposite elbow. So that means uh, if he goes with his left, I'm elbowing with my right. So he just puts the other elbow in. You don't know which way your shoulder is going to be. I could be more this way, and he punches. This might be uh, uh, more conducive for me to throw that. So one, right there. So. Good. OK, so the next one. When he, elbow, I mean, when he punches, I elbow, and I'm going to throw the eye jab. So it's going to go more like one, two. So the cool thing about this is if he fakes me with the punch, I still get the eye jab going. So it, it doesn't matter. Once I'm in motion, I just keep going. So he's going to go one, uh, do the opposite, one, and then eye. That's it. Do it again. Elbow, eye. Good. Let's go back and forth. One, eye. That's it. One. That's it. So make sure you don't eye, uh, eye jab your partner. You go one, eye jab. Then I go one, eye jab. And then again, we can go with the rear hand. So when I jab, he goes with the rear hand right here. You don't know the shoulder position again. OK, come on back. All right, so everything you do horizontal, you could do vertical. So when he punches, I can elbow right here. So you could do it, just vertical elbow. One right there. So a lot of guys will fight right here, and if he punches, they just go right here and guide it right into it. So you just elbow the hand. Why would I want to elbow his hand? I mean, it's obvious. If I can get a little sting on it, go to pat, and he pulls back, now we can just continue to go. All I'm trying to do again is defang the snake. So when he goes, I go vertical. He goes, it's just back and forth. Go light. This one with the NHB uh, gloves, Sometimes it sneaks. When I punch and he elbows, it kisses it a little bit. So you could really sting someone. So don't do it. Just kind of go easy with him right here. And let him uh, guide into it. I like it because my hands are still up in my face. I'm still protecting myself. OK? So now we're going to go with the rear hand. So he punches right there. Two. That's it. That's it. OK, so now. Whatever we do uh, horizontal, we could do vertical. So before, we did the horizontal, and we wipe with the eye. We could do it vertically also here, and then shoot to the eye jab. So we're going to go back and forth. If I hit, he elbows, places the eye. Now if I get it, there. He gets it, there. I get it, here. So let's just go back and forth with that a little bit. So here, and put it in. One, two. One, two. One, two. So I get the and then I just shoot right to the eye. OK, Willie goes, one, and then shoots right to the eye. So just go back and forth. That's it. OK, now we could also do it with the rear hand. So one eye jab, then Willie goes, one eye jab. One eye jab, one eye jab. Back and forth. All right, so remember, if you get the hit, you could shoot to the eye jab. All right, let's recap, recap this whole thing. When he goes horizontal, you can horizontal. That's lead elbow. Then you go horizontal, rear elbow, horizontal, rear elbow. Then you can horizontal, rear elbow, I mean, a lead elbow to the eye jab. Horizontal, lead elbow to the eye jab. Horizontal, rear elbow, eye jab. Horizontal, rear elbow, eye jab. Vertical, 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 rear, vertical, rear. Vertical lead to the eye, vertical lead to the eye. Vertical rear to the eye, vertical rear to the eye. That's the elbows attacking the hand in the lead hand series. All right, continuing with the Gaja series, Joe comes in. Remember, first one, gunting upper. So again, one, and then upper and just keep going. Second one. One, gunting, upper, I get the close side. Let me swing on this side so they can see the third one. Third one, sometimes when I go, I can hit or he moves it over. Okay, so one, 
Green thing, I go to hit, he moved it over. So I, went, I go through the other side. I want you to just tuck again. See this? This is the double grab. I can knee it still, but now I just roll it over. See, I put the head to the ground, drop the knee, drop the knee. They usually move it and they kick it. Okay, come on up. Let's do it from this side, see how it looks. So, one, pin ting. See, he leans in towards me. I go, well, I missed it. So now I just roll it, put it over, drop him, drop the knee. Turn, drop the knee. Drag, kick the back of the neck right there. Okay, last time. Perry, you got the ginting, you have the uppercut, oh, I missed, I just tuck and grab, okay? It's not even that imperative to tuck. I can also grab here, but just, I would rather have it this way if you could get it. Throw him over, slam dunk, right to the ground, drop the knee, drop the knee, drag, kick it, put him to sleep, okay? Now, there are times where this is gonna fail. Let me keep you on this side, we'll show better here. So we go one, two. Let's say I blow it all the way. I don't get the side. Maybe you lean back and I don't feel I can get it at all. This is where we call the parallel can't. So again, one, I go one up. I can't get him at all. Maybe he leaned way back, can't get in there, can't come in for the lock. So what I do is I go right here and I put the arm parallel, the wrist lock goes on, and I just drag it straight down. So look where we're at again, the Egyptian series. So now I can go right back into this again. Okay, so come on back this side. So one, I go here, I go, whoop, I don't have it. I just pull it down. This is just gonna put on the Egyptian series right here. So we go one, two, remember the rollover, everything. So you could always review the, or back the video up and then look at that again, okay? So all four, we're up to number four. So all four are one, I hit, come out in my boxing. Two, he, he leans away, I hook the neck. Tuck and go. Let me swing you over here. Okay, so I tuck and go on the close side. Three, he leaned in, I grab close to uh, far side, and I take him down. Four, he leaned back. I go, oh, I can't get the head at all. Then I just pull him down right here, and then I can go back into my Egyptian series from there. So this is one to four. All right, so we're back. Now we're going to continue on with the Chieftain series. Now I've already here, come on down. I've already shown you, let me scoot you this way just a bit, the number one, uh, sorry, the number one, the number two. We had the three, let me cheat you this way a little bit so I can stay in front of camera, thanks. Number three, I get up, lift and turn it over, uh, sorry, number four, and then right there my knees pinch it in here. So then we ended with the branch down or we call it the chicken wing. Uh, they always say if you were a tree, this would be the tree branch down, tree branch up, straight branch. Okay? So if we have branch down position, this is where we stopped it. So now, remember the people I told you have really flexible wrists? Sometimes I grab it and there's nothing. I go whoop and I go wow, that thing just, you thought it snapped in half but they just flexible. So if I'm here, if I go one, if there's nothing, what they do is they grab a digit and they go this way. Be careful, because they do break, okay? If you want to be a little extra careful, grab two, it's a little stronger. So right here we got one, two, three, okay? The next one is I'm gonna step across. This turns it right here. If he was going for weapon, I'd step on that hand. If his hand comes up to step or grab a weapon there, I'll step on it here and I transfer it uh, over the arm uh, to the high line. Let me sneak you just a little bit more this way. Thank you. Okay, so now, right here, I'm gonna hook this foot and I just go right here. This is the next one in the series, okay? And then I'll leave you with this. They go right here, and then this is what they call the chieftain itself. I'll explain why in a second. Let me run through this whole thing again. Just stay where you're at. Okay, so I brought them down. We got to the part where we're in the, uh, the chicken wing or the branch down position. I put it on. I flex the wrist. He, he, maybe he forces his way out. I grab the digit and I go the opposite way. 
step over, put it on. I think he's going to grab a weapon. I step on the hand, I put it on. Now I hook the face, and then I put it on. So now I go right here. See it? This is pretty good. Trapped in there, I just use my bicep to flex the wrist. And then the last one is the chieftain. They just let this sling right through here. Now this, this is really, I always laughed at this one. Because if they had the stick, they would sit there and they'd break that. They'd reach back and they'd hit the leg and break it. Because if this was a, a, the chief or a general or a man of importance, it could be good bargaining power. So I want to keep him. So they would maim him. They'd hit a couple limbs. And they can get up. I'll just go easy, Joe. They'd get up like that. And he, they could keep him. And they could just drag him along to wherever they wanted to go. So this is why we call this whole series the chieftain because of this one movement. OK, so let's go from one. Do it from this side. OK, so we had one, two, pull, head, elbow, I f put it down. This is the wrist. Put it to the floor. I stand it up, flex it on. And I come up, I run around, turn them over. OK, wrist lock, knees and wrist lock. Branch down position. I can flex the wrist. Let me scoot you this way just a bit. No, uh, twist yourself this way. Yeah, that's it. So I could flex the wrist. I could take the digit. I step over. So put it on here. I step on the hand in case he's or trying to grab something. Put on the lock. Sling it across the face. Lean. Now remember the bicep. And then I go right here into the chieftain. You could damage the hand. You can go back, damage it. And this, this is the guy that you could keep. And they usually keep it by bending that and lifting it up. OK? Work that. OK, so from single hand hubud, we go into neck control. This will be incorporated later with it, with everything. I mean, hubud is one whole big monster that we will link together uh, later on. But right now, we just separate it. We, we take it in fragments and just drill that. So Troy comes in, put you on this side again. All right, so now, if he had control of my neck, it's not a good thing for me. So I'm going to work all the different escapes, and I'll go for his neck. We turn it into a game again. So when we start to go, the first one is literally I deny him from having this pocket right here, because this is good control. So when we go, he denies me, I deny him. Denies me right there. Looks a little silly. We both sit there going, hi, hi, hi. All right, so it goes back and forth. So just denial, OK? So now if I do get in, he's going to slap my hand off and grab. So I slap my hand off, or slap his hand off, sorry. He slaps mine, I slap his. That's it. This is just the second one, is to just slap it off and re-grab. OK, the first one is denial. Denial, right that, all right? So now the second one is he gets in there. I slap it, and then he goes. I slap it, his turn, my turn, his turn, my turn, OK? The third one is I want you to just, uh, what, what you're going to do is as he goes, you're going to lean back a little bit. Virtually the same one, but it's, you don't even let it in. You just kind of lean back as he's coming in. You see it? That's my number three. OK, first one, he grabs, I deny it. Second one, he grabs, I slap it off, and I grab back. Third one, I just lean back, OK? Fourth one, when he grabs, I'm going to hit it with my shoulder right here. I'm hoping to just jar him a little bit or to get him to press back. So if I go like that, if he presses back, it lets me inside. You see it? So they just hit it, and then they come inside. That's it. Hit, and go inside. That's it. So we have denial. Then we have, if I get it, he slaps it off. Then when I go for it, he leans back and takes it. Or if I capture again, he hits it and then comes back in. That's the four that I need you to work on for now. Coming back into the kicking, I want to show you a couple more versions of how we'll handle a kick coming in at us. All right, so back to this, it could. When he kicks, right now they just leg shield it. 
The leg shield is called karasak. Karasak means to shield. Some systems, they'll call it jabong. In the jabong, uh, it's, it's more well known as the sai. You know, the sai is from Japanese martial art. It looks like a pitchfork, kind of. And what they'll do is they, they carry it in the, uh, along the leg. They'll strap it to the leg. So that way, if someone were to round kick them, bang, he's kicking into this metal sai. So the, uh, it depends on the system or who you're learning from. They'll say karasak, which means shield, or they'll say jabong, which is the sai. So right now, it's a good warm-up drill just to sit there and take the shield. All right. When I do the shield, I don't go dead 45, because when he comes shooting in, it's going to be shin on shin. That's kind of tough. I don't go straight and let it come in, because that's going to hurt. I kind of split the difference. I go. It's going out at a 45, but my shin's still pointing forward, if that makes sense. I'm going out, but straight. I don't want to go out with my toe pointed at a 45. So I just go right there. So put it on me a little bit, right there. So this is a little durable. He's hitting a little bit of the meat, but in the front, it's a lot more durable than cramping the back, the calf. So we go one, two, three, four, and five. OK? All right, so that's the karasak. Now the last one that I want to show, if he kicks mid-body, they they cup it right here. Do it again, please. They cup and they hit it, OK? So when we go, they cup hit and kick it before it lands. I'll let uh, Troy have a little revenge. See, so they cup, hit, kick it before it lands. He's being gentle with me. Thanks, Troy. All right, so one, two, and they kick it. And then you're going to go back into your hands. One, two, kick it. It's kind of nice because if you do uh, get it, sometimes you can snag it with the rear hand. He'll go to pull it away. As he pulls it away, you just kick in it. So if he gets me, one, two, I pull. I almost pull it right down into the kick, OK? So you go one, two, kick that leg. One, two, kick the leg. Or beat it, beat it, OK? So he beats and beats it, OK? So those are the two that I want you to have, just the karasak, karasak, one, two, and beat it. One, two, and beat it. And I guess it's three versions. One can hook it and then drop and kick it. And one, he hooks it, drops, kicks it. OK? Train those three. Coming back into Huba now, I believe we're around number 14. So Joe's in. OK, remember the five? So we do the five right here. So now, if you remember lead hand series, I could horizontal the, uh, the knuckle, or I could vertical the knuckle. OK, we're going to go over that in, that in this series. So number 14 right now is going to be me elbowing and then continuing with the punch. So Joe, you're going to elbow and then continue the punch. Slowly, elbow, and then go. Now, if you notice, I'm just going like that. I'm not clipping it because I don't want to damage him. So you can still get the result. Or if you feel you have control, you just kind of hit. If you look, if you hit here, it's not too bad. The target is the knuckle later. You want to hit it or you want to really wrench it, OK? But obviously, he doesn't want me to do that. He wants to keep training. So we just kind of care about each other a little bit and don't wrench each other or hurt each other. So you elbow and then go, that's it. So you pat and then you, get, you go. Remember the whole thing about not admiring your work. The cool thing about it is it goes right back into place. So it teaches you to just keep moving. And I think it's really important to do. So we go one, elbow, and then go. That's it, OK? So now watch this. Here's where it's going to get a little tricky, OK? When we're going, I elbow with the rear, and it switches sides. You see it? I elbow with the rear, and it switches sides, OK? Elbow, switch. So the difference is I'm elbowing with the opposite side. Our number 14 was elbow with the hand that's punching. Now I elbow with the other hand, and it switches me to Joe's other side. I elbow, and then it goes to the other side, OK? That's our number 15. Number 16 is virtually the same, but goes vertical. So when we go, I'm not going to switch sides on this one. I just go right here. And really, this would go to the eye jab. And then we just keep going. For Hubud, sometimes I just punch, because I don't feel like 
getting uh, getting a poke in on his eye right now. He's not going to like that. So I just go up and in there. You do it. That's it. You just elbow it. Okay? It's just a good way. You really, it's, to me, it, it's batting practice. You're, you're, you're uh, teaching yourself how to pick it up on the fly. So if he's going, like that, right there. That's it. Right there. Nice. Yeah, good. Okay, so slow it down. So now we can go to the rear, but it switches the side. You see it? So it's virtually the same as one and two. Rear hand, and then it switches the side. You see it? Pat, and then goes. And then goes. So it's just target practice on how to switch sides and how to get that elbow on the knuckle. Okay, right there. Right there. Okay, so let's review it. First one, horizontal. You do the horizontal. Horizontal switches sides. Good. Horizontal switches sides. Okay, then I go vertical. You go vertical. That's it. Vertical. One more time. That's it. Now I use the rear hand for the fourth one. Vertical, but it switches my side. Vertical, and it switches my side. That's the four that you're going to need to do. So I have more. Come on back after you get this done. All right, let's go into our one, two, advanced series. Now remember, the one, two is just the jab cross. So I'm going to have Joe in. He's going to throw me the jab. He's going to throw the cross. So one more time, throw. Right there, I just want to shoot right in here. So when he goes, I just shoot, and then I'm going to take it down. All right, so let me do this slowly. Let me swing you over here for a second so you can see it here. One, I just shoot. Now, if I could, I'd hit the face. But if I don't feel the face is there, I just turn in. If you look at it, it's almost like an arm lever that drops him down. And then I can go into any of my locking, like the Egyptian series or the Chieftain series. OK? All right. So. When we go, one, think of here. It's going to look a little weird to go here. This just pulls it right down. And then right here, I could just go into my locking. OK? Last time. Let's go real slow with it. Parry, and then right here. Doesn't mean this hand's going to be out of the way. I'm just doing it so you could see what this arm is doing. I might go <clears throat> here like that, and then pull it down. OK? And then go into the locking. OK? So now. The next one, I think of it the same way. I pull it, but oh, it came out, I'm on top. Remember the cut the chicken? See, I just step, step over, and then I put the lock on. OK, so we come right here. All right, so when I go, I go here. Oh, it came out. I just grab, just drag it down. I hook it right here, step over, and then I go into the lock. OK, come on back. Last time, slowly. One, I want to go in, oh, it came out. Drag down, hook. Step over and turn. Put the lock on. Now, I want you to get used to tugging and pulling your opponent. So if we go here, and let's say I did get the pull, but I don't feel like I could take him down, I want you to step in, OK? So let me do this a little more efficiently. One, so I pull it. So I just come here. This is just going to pull him down. Slam dunk the head, drop the knee. Pretty simple. Come on, Joe. So one, so I go here. I just tug it. Step in behind. See, I just get the shoulder blades, and now I see this is another version of uh, uh, just a headlock with the knees. So one, I get the hit. I can tug them in. This comes right here. Do you see it? So I just go in the shoulders, and I drop it. Now I can just go down right here. OK? Last time. Let me do it slowly. One, two. I tug it. I go, oh, I'm not going to get it. Maybe his arm gets free. I run behind, pull him down. It could be right here if I want also. OK? So that's just going behind it. So now, we can also go from the tug, and I can hook under. Do you see it? So then when I hook under, I just pull it. See, this hammers the head. I drop them, and I go into the locking. OK? Again, I pull, I hit, I pull it in. I go up. See that arm? Just pull it over to you. See, this hits and softens them. And then right there, I just put the lock on. OK? One more time. One, two, three. I just dig under there. See, this is going to go right here. See, this hammers this. And then I can go into the locking. OK? 
if I can go under, I can also go over, and this is going to pull it here. Again, I step over, and I just go into the lock, OK? So one, two, I just go over, and I pull it down this way. So I step over, and I just turn the lock, put it on right there. OK, one more time. One, hit, pull, dig over. I can help them down also. Step over, and then see, I just throw the lock on there. OK? The next one, one, I'm going to pull in. If I feel them tug away, I uppercut. See, this pulls the slaps, elbows, then I step this way. And then you could just go into the punching. This one I like a lot. Because when I go here, if you feel it tug away, I just pull it. If he's still getting away, I go like here, I slap, I snap the elbow, and I go. Let me do this slow for you. One, two, pull. He pulls away. See the upper? See the pull and the slap, the elbow? And then I hack right there. Then I just go right into my boxing. Or I just cut the line and take him down. OK? So one, two, pull. See the headbutt. See the elbow if I want. Punch. I pull. I slap. I elbow. And then right there. OK? So that's the six that I want you to have in the, uh, this advanced series. OK, going a little further in the rear hand series, let's go into number six now. So number six is what we say is retaining the center line. So if one, I'm going to hit. This retains the center line, meaning if we had gone past center line, I have to do the hit as I did in number five. But number six, if he doesn't push me past, I go off. This goes to the throat. I hit the elbow. Then I come back to the head. This will knee, step again, turn, and I go into the lock. OK, let me do it from this side. So one, two, three, and it goes here and here. OK, so right here, I, I'm not holding them. I just put my hands in here. Really, this would hack. This would knee. I would step, turn, and then again, lock. OK, one more time. Parry, gunting, there. Then elbow, and then hack. Pull a knee, step, turn, push them through, and pop the arm. OK, last time, slowly. Perry, I do the gun ting, I go to hit, he stopped me. I knock it off, I shoot to the throat or the eye, snap the elbow, then I hack back to the throat. Pull a knee, step, see right here, I just push it right through, and then we go into the lock, okay? The next one, one, two, I was lick and hit. Do you remember that from the one, two series? We, we did the one, two step with the hack, one, two, three. We're going to do that, but we always go into the throw on this series. So if I go here, one, two, three, we are back again right here to the throw and the knee. Now, the common theme in this whole rear hand series is, let me pretend this side, is body position. See, they're, they're saying the first one, my body's here. The second one, my shoulder's turn. now I'm here. You understand it? So if I go into the split or wherever I go. So now the, the part where I'm at now is my body's on the outside. So I just was slick, and this can go here. Or I was slick, and I can backhand here. One, two, three, grab, go, and kneel. OK? So it's not the split that I'm doing going this side. It is from the outside. You see it's one more time. I go outside, and I hack it. Boom, then go right here, turn, throw it, and kneel right down on it. OK? So that's the next one that I want you to cover. So going in now to the next one. Perry, you remember we did the decoupe you had where you caught it, or you could catch it, or you can catch it on top. That's going to be my end. I'm gonna be, that's going to go all the way to number 10. So right now, I want you to start on top. Let's start on top with this. One, I go right here. See this elbows? I just drag it right down. See, this is just going to step in and lock right here. OK? So if I do the, the cup outside, and I, I go right here, I just drop it. See, I hook it here. See, this can just ride up, and I can bridge here and put the lock on. One more time, slowly. Perry, right here, I elbow. I just drop my weight. Now, if you can look right from here, let me kind of cheat over. See how I have that arm? I could put my knee into the face and lift, or I could step over the face and lift. Either one should be sufficient. 
The second decoupe we do is from the split. Remember the head, the bump, take it down. Let's pull them over this way right now so I could step in here and go into the lock, okay? So if we go split like that, see the head, the bump, take down. See, I just kind of move it over, just like we did in the Egyptian series. In fact, I can go to the Egyptian series from here also. Okay? All right, so one more time. We go parry, split, pull. See the headbutt, the elbow, the turn. I push it over. And yeah, let's do the Egyptian series here. So we just go right into this. Okay? All right, the last one. So, so far, the decoup, the catch series, I went on top, I did the split, now we full snake. So when I go this way, I go right here. Now this is an even thing. You gotta make sure that my, your energy is more forward than him. If he pushes more forward, he could out leverage me. Okay, so it's important. When you go outside and you do the full snake, I lean in, I have to lean in. I just wanna drop my weight now. You see it, we're back to here. Let's say that he turns the arm this time, now you just step over, remember this drill, grab the pant, grab the leg, bear hug, you can grab the back of the head, you can go into this whole series, okay? So it's up to you which one you want to work. So any of them are okay, they're all good. So one, I go outside, I grab it, just drop. All right, he bends that arm, then I step over, right there is the lock. You got that? Okay, so that's the 10 that I want you to have in the rear hand series. Going into the one, two, three series again, let's go a little further. Troy comes in. He's going to throw the jab, the cross, and I'm going to cover on the hook this time. So one, two, cover. All right, so just put it on me a little bit. One, two, cover right there. Okay, this is what I want to do. You remember that one, three series where he threw the one and the three, and then when we scoop an eye, we just put this into this series. That's all you do. When he comes in, one, two, now it comes over. So it's a bit much to pull it all the way down for the elbow. So what do we do? One, two, three, I meet, pull, meet, I, one, two, three. Again, one, two, three, cover, elbow, elbow, I, one, two, three. One, good thing, here, cover, elbow, elbow, I, one, two, three. So slowly, elbow, pull, elbow, I, one, two, three. Last time, parry, gunting, cover, elbow, pull it down, elbow, I, one, two, three. So to review, parry, gunting, cover for, the, uh, for just the hook, I could swing and elbow it, wipe the eye, go into my punching. Or one, two, if it's a little high, I meet up, I pull, elbow, I, one, two, three. Join that and put that in your one, three, one, two, three series. This is an important part of Hubad to me. Now we're going to start to transfer from left side to right side, so I'm going to start to show you our switches. I have three switches that I want to do. Troy's in. All right, so we're just going to start with the number five Hubad. We've been doing it, should have this by now. If not, you gotta go back, get this before we go any further. So, we got the five for five. Let's slow down so they can see it. First one is I wanna scoop and I'm gonna punch back. See how he just rode it over? Now he's on the opposite side of his body with this. I scoop, roll over. What's that scoop called? Paglibut. So when he goes, I just scoop it. So from the five, I scoop, I scoop, right there, slowly scoop. Troy's got to track me back, or if he doesn't, I get that hit. So when we go, after I scoop it, he rides it back. So both sides, I feel, are learning a lot right now. I'm teaching myself how to get that scoop and a hit. He's learning. If he's scooped, he can track it right back and deflect the blow. So I, I really like this one. I think the benefits are enormous with it. That's it.
see how I scoop it? Just little scoop, shoot right back in. Little scoop, right back in. Okay? So this is the first one. Paglibut. And then he does what? Paalis. Paalis. Okay. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So, or English is scoop and parry. Okay, that's my first one. Now, we're going to go to what they say, parry inside and switch. So this one, a little more like boxing when I feel it. I feel like you parry and you hit. You see it? So he punches, I parry it, and I shoot to the other side. Okay, parry, shoot to the other side. Parry, shoot to the other side. So let me slow it down so you can really see it. I parry it. I throw the other punch, and then he just picks it up. I parry, throw the other punch, he picks it up. Okay? Slowly. I really got to go slow with these just so you can see it. I don't want you to miss any calibration of what I'm doing. Okay, so now watch. I parry it. I want to just shoot that punch in. Punch. So it's me going mm, and throwing that cross. Okay? He is not going to let me get away with that. He tracks me over. And then he just goes into that outside gunting. So I parry it, he tracks me over, and he gets the outside gunting. And it puts us right back into the drill. Parry and shoot the punch. I parry, he parries it back. Do you see it? I parry inside, he parries outside. Parry, parry. That's it. So that's our number two. Okay? Going into the third one is inside hubud. Now, inside hubud is the exact same as outside hubud, but I'm inside. So what I mean by this is he doesn't have to switch. Don't switch yet. I'm just going to go right here. See it? We're both doing inside hubud. I can go back outside, or we could just constantly switch. You see it? So I can just go right here. So really slow. Outside hubud. I go inside, he parries me over, he goes outside. I go inside, I go inside. See, this just could be constant switching. Let's slow down even more. Parry, hit, trap, punch. Same thing as we've been doing on the outside. This is the exact, no difference. The only thing is I move here and continue the exact same motion. So I'm just staying inside. Troy's outside, okay? So let's review this. I can scoop, I can scoop, I can parry and punch, I can parry and punch right there. Or I can go inside Hubud, and then he stays on the outside to transfer us left to right, okay? That's the switches. I can't stress how important these are in this game. Neck controls. Let's keep going with this now. So he comes in. All right, so he has the neck. We already did the start, so let's continue on with it. All right, so the next one, I want to just lean back. I'm just going to hit right here. So I hit it, and then I come in. So this is the inside gunting and in. Remember, gunting means scissors. So they look at this motion. See my hands? They like scissor in, and then it goes. For training, I just hit above it. Combat, I would hit it. Okay? That's it. So this is what I want for the first one. Okay? So hit it, grab. Hit it, grab. Even if he doesn't let go of my neck, it uh, opens up the line for me to come in. You see that? One, two, that's it. So we just play. Just play. That's it. Okay, so that's hitting it. So now the next version that we're going to go into is I slip under it and grab. He slips under grabs. See, so just shoulder shrug. That's it. So just drop the shoulder and come up. See, the, the whole control point is he has my shoulder locked. If I can get underneath it, I free myself. Okay, so we just go back and forth. Go. That's it. 
Okay? So now the next one that we're going to do, when I'm here, I shoulder shrug it, but then I elbow back. See, I shoulder shrug, elbow back. This one's pretty strong. If I start nailing it, he's not going to like it. I'm not going to like it. Let's not like it for a second. Go. <laughs> That's it. All right, third variation drops down. So right now I come out, maybe, well, I don't know, whatever reason, my arm's not pitched this way, but I'm going to drop down and grab. That's it. Okay, time. All right, so now watch. Okay. When we're here, I can dip under, he can dip under. I can dip under, elbow, dip under, elbow. I can dip under, drop, dip under, drop. Okay, that's what I want you to have for now. 